learning outcomes. After studying this module, you shall be able to A. Know the concept of resilience B. Learn various models of resilience C. Identify the pathways to resilience and D. Understand the various ways of fostering resilience. Introduction In the 1960s, Murphy criticized the negative focus of research studying individual differences in children. Around 1970s, some developmental psychologists focused their attention to the phenomena of children who despite being at risk for problems and psychopathology succeeded in life. The pioneers inspired research on resilience in development in the following decades. Resilience in the face of adversity has been the research focus for a long time. There has been a lot of interest in individual adaptation to the environment, which can be seen in theories ranging from natural selection to psychoanalytic ego psychology. Apart from the ego, earlier concepts of mastery motivation, competence and self-efficacy in the 20th century, psychology focused on positive aspects of adaptation in development. In resilience, research, those children were studied over time who were at high risk for serious problems due to their biological heritage or environmental deprivations. Resilience refers to human's amazing ability to bounce back and even thrive in the face of serious life challenges. It generally refers to a class of phenomena which involves patterns of positive adaptation in adversity. Two major judgments are required to identify individuals as resilient. Number one, individuals are quote unquote doing okay or better than okay in terms of certain expectations for behavior. Number two, there have been circumstances that posed a major challenge. The main concepts in resilience research are as follows. Defining and assessing good developmental outcomes. Good outcomes can be defined on the basis of how successfully an individual meets age-related developmental tasks. Developmental tasks refer to expectations of a given society or culture in historical context for the behavior of children in different age periods and situations. One of the ongoing debates with respect to resilience is whether the criteria should include good internal adaptation as well as good external adaptation. It is usually understood that external adaptation standards define resilience. Another debate relates to whether to expect resilient children to function just fine or better to excel. In studies of resilient children and youth, typical measures assess the following in terms of good outcomes, academic achievement, conduct, peer acceptance and friendship, normative mental health and involvement in age-appropriate activities. Most studies focus on multiple indicators of good functioning rather than a single domain of functioning. Defining and assessing threats to good adaptation or development. Many different kinds of threats to individual functioning and development have been identified. Premature birth, divorce, maltreatment, parental illness.
parental psychopathology, poverty, homelessness and the trauma due to war and natural disasters. Initially, researchers focused on a single indicator to define risk but later there was a shift to studying cumulative risk. There are two major forms of cumulative risk assessment, risk indices and stressful life experience scores. Cumulative risk scores sum the number of risk factors present in a child's life whereas the life stress scores add up the number of negative life experiences encountered during that time. Assessing assets, resources and protective factors. The concept of assets, resources, protective factors and other related processes have been studied in resilience research. Assets are the opposite of risk factors and their presence predicts better outcomes for one or more domains of good adaptation. Resource refers to the human, social and material capital utilized in adaptive processes. Protective factors are the qualities of persons or contexts that predict better outcomes under high risk conditions. In fact, these are the processes by which good outcomes happen when development is threatened. Resilience research has also been conducted on disadvantaged youth. Buckner and his colleagues 2003 identified a resilient group and a non-resilient group of children. They found that resilient children had no clinically significant mental health symptoms and showed generally positive functioning. Resilient youths showed higher levels of intellectual competence and self-esteem. Resilience was found to be linked to the number of negative life events and to chronic life stress. Non-resilient children had suffered more negative life events. Self-regulation was also found to be the most powerful predictor of resilience. Many factors which contribute to resilience in childhood also contribute to resilience in later life. Riff and her colleagues have provided a very extensive model of well-being. Research has shown that the following six dimensions are predictive of resilient responses in the face of adversity. Self-acceptance, personal growth, purpose in life, environmental mastery, autonomy, positive relations with others. All people have been found to be as happy as people in other periods of adulthood. Studies show low rates of nearly all psychological disorders among older adults except dementia. This can be explained with the help of socio-emotional selectivity theory. It helps explain how age-related changes can be the basis of a more satisfying, pleasurable and hassle-free life and for stronger social support. Cartinson argues that people's perception of how much time they have left in life exerts a powerful influence over the goals they pursue. According to the socio-emotional selectivity theory, as people realize that they have fewer years to live, they shift their energies and attention away from activities and goals related to the future and focus more on the present. Two major approaches have characterized the research on resilience. Variable focused approaches examine the links among characteristics of individuals, environments and experiences to understand the factors leading to good outcomes when risk or adversity is high. Person focused approaches identify resilient people and try to understand how they differ from others who are not so resilient. Variable Focus Models of Resilience Several variable focused models of resilience are additive models, interactive models 
and indirect models. Additive models. In the simplest model, the additive effects of risk factors, asset resource factors, and bipolar asset risk factors are examined in relation to a positive outcome. Risk or asset gradients also reflect additive models of this kind. Risk factors in such models often include well-established risks like a large family size, income below poverty line, etc. Interactive models. There are moderating effects in which one variable alters the impact of the risk or adversity variable. Such moderators are called vulnerability and protective factors. One of such moderator effects is the possibility that temperament or personality predisposes individuals to react with more or less distress or negative emotion to a given threat. Another kind of moderator is the threat activated protective system which is triggered by the occurrence of threatening experiences. Indirect models of resilience. Mediated effects refer to situations where a powerful influence on outcome is itself affected by risk and resources. For example, studying the determinants of parenting as well as outcomes such interventions are made in which there is an attempt to improve the quality of key predictors such as parental effectiveness. Another indirect model is the invisible effect of total prevention where a powerful protective factor prevents the risk from offering at all. Three types of person-focused models are very important in resilience research. One model derives from the single case study of individuals. The second model is based on identifying very high risk individuals who do well. This is a classic approach in studying resilience influenced by the most important longitudinal study of resilience, the Quai Longitudinal Study by Werner and Smith. Full diagnostic models of resilience classify children on the two major aspects of individual lives, good outcomes and adversity or risk. In the project Competence Study of Resilience, youth from a normative urban sample were classified as high, middle or low on competence. This was done on the basis of success on three main developmental tasks for their age group, academic achievement, rule-abiding conduct versus anti-social behavior and social competence with peers. Youth classified as high in competence had achieved at least average success on all three developmental tasks. They also were classified on the basis of lifetime adversity exposure based on life histories of negative experiences out of their control. Lifetime adversity was rated as high, average or low. Pathway models. Currently, there is growing interest in pathway models of resilience, which explains patterns of behavior over time. Three resilient pathways. Path A reflects a child growing up in a high risk environment who functions well in life. Path B reflects a child who is doing well is diverted by a major blow and recovers. Path C reflects a later bloomer pattern in which a high risk child who is not doing well is provided with life altering chances or opportunities. Protective factors for resilience. There are certain protective factors for resilience in children and youth which are as follows within the child. Good cognitive abilities, including problem solving and attentional skills. Easy temperament in infancy, adaptable personality later in development. Positive self-perceptions, self-efficacy, faith and a sense of meaning in life. A positive outlook on life, good self-regulation of emotional arousal 
and impulses within the family close relationships with caregiving adults authoritative parenting but high on warmth monitoring and expectations positive family climate with low discord between parents organized home environment post secondary education of parents within family or other relationships close relationships to competent pro social and supportive adults connections to pro social and rule abiding peers within the community effective schools ties to pro social organizations like schools clubs etc high levels of public safety good public health and health care availability risk focused strategies preventing or reducing risk and stressors these strategies aim to reduce the exposure of children to hazardous experiences prevent or reduce the likelihood of low birth weight or prematurity through parental care prevent child abuse or neglect through parent education reduce teenage drinking smoking or drug use through community programs prevent homelessness through housing policy or emergency assistance asset focus strategies improving number or quality of resources of social capital these approaches aim to increase the amount of access to or quality of resources children need for the development of competence provide a tutor organize a girls or boys club offer parent education classes build a recreation center process focus strategies mobilizing the power of human adaptational systems these strategies aim to mobilize the fundamental protective systems for development and aim to promote good adaptation build self efficacy through graduated success model of teaching teach effective coping strategies for specific threatening situations foster secure attachment relationships between infants and parents through parental sensitivity training etc nurture mentoring relationships for children through a program to match children with potential mentors the american psychological association suggests 10 ways to build resilience which are to maintain good relationships with close family members friends and others to avoid seeing crises or stressful events as unbearable problems to accept circumstances that cannot be changed to develop realistic goals and move towards them to take decisive actions in adverse situations to look for opportunities of self discovery after a struggle with loss to develop self confidence to keep a long term perspective and consider the stressful event in a broader context to maintain a hopeful outlook expecting good things to take care of one's mind and body exercising regularly paying attention to one's own needs and feelings a number of self help approaches to resilience building have been developed drawing mainly on cognitive behavioral therapy for example a group cognitive behavioral intervention called the pen resiliency program has been shown to foster various aspects of resilience a meta analysis of 70 prp studies showed that the intervention significantly reduces depressive symptoms over time one of the most important conclusions arising from resilience research is that extraordinary resilience of children arises from ordinary processes known as ordinary magic there has been a tremendous change in the frameworks for understanding and helping children at risk many researchers have also started focusing on the biological underpinnings of resilience number 1 around 1970 some developmental psychologists focused their attention to the phenomena of 
children who despite being at risk for problems and psychopathology succeeded in life. Number two, resilience refers to human's amazing ability to bounce back and even thrive in the face of serious life challenges. Three, the framework for resilience involves defining and assessing good developmental outcomes, defining and assessing threats to good adaptation or development and assessing assets, resources and protective factors. Number four, resilience research has also been conducted on disadvantaged youth. Fifth, research has shown that the following six dimensions are predicting of resilient responses in the face of adversity. That is self-acceptance, personal growth, purpose in life, environmental mastery, autonomy and positive relations with others. Six, according to the socio-economic selectivity theory, as people realize that they have fewer years to live, they shift their energies and attention away from activities and goals related to the future and focus more on the present circumstances or present time. 7. The main models of resilient, resilience are variable focus models, person focus models and pathway models. 8. There are certain protective factors for resilience in children and youth within the child within the family, other relationships, and within the community. 9. Strategies for promoting resilience in children and youth are risk-focused strategies, preventive, oblique reducing risk and stressors, asset-focused strategies, improving number or quality of resources of social capital and process focused strategies. Mobilizing the power of human adaptational system. The American Psychological Association has also suggested 10 ways to build resilience. 